This sphere was to be used to build a third atomic bomb, but the object killed two of the researchers involved in a bizarre way. Harry Daglian and Louis Sloten, two good friends, lost their lives researching the Demon Core. This story is incredible, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Surely you've made mistakes before, and some super stupid mishap has led to a rather suboptimal situation, but the following has certainly never happened to you, triggering a deadly radiation chain reaction in the core of a nuclear bomb by using a screwdriver incorrectly. That's not one of my silly jokes, it really happened. But take it easy, let's start at the beginning of the story. The Second World War ended shortly after the American atomic bombs were used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. However, it was not clear that the Japanese Empire would then capitulate, which is why the USA was working on a third atomic bomb. The core of this atomic bomb was a plutonium sphere weighing 6.2 kilograms, which today is known as the Demon Core, and it really earned this nickname. First of all, the question arises as to why the USA kept this plutonium core at all after the Second World War. You never know when you might need the core of a nuclear bomb. I always have one with me. Research into nuclear weapons continued after the war, and although it has not been used in war since then, it has certainly been used in tests. The Demon Core was originally intended to be used as part of Operation Crossroads, a series of nuclear bomb tests conducted by the US to study the effect of nuclear weapons on warships. Two nuclear weapons tests were carried out as part of Operation Crossroads, named Abel and Baker. These tests took place on Bikini Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. This may sound familiar to you, and no joke, the makers of Spongebob probably really wanted to make an allusion to this with the name Bikini Bottom. However, the Demon Core was ultimately not used in such a test and was melted down beforehand, and presumably because of the tragic events it triggered. The first accident occurred on August 21st, 1945, when physicist Harry Daglian conducted an experiment aimed at determining the critical mass of the plutonium core. In other words, he wanted to find out how close the nucleus was to the conditions for a self-sustaining chain reaction. This is crucial information for understanding neutron physics and how nuclear weapons work. We will take a closer look at exactly what such a chain reaction in a plutonium nucleus is in a moment. Daglian built tungsten carbide blocks around the demon core to investigate its crit henry eichel mass. Tungsten carbide is a material that reflects neutrons, so in this experiment it acted as a neutron reflector around the demon core. Here you can see a replica of the experiment and the tungsten carbide blocks around the plutonium sphere. By surrounding the plutonium core with tungsten carbide, you increase the number of neutrons in the core that are needed to maintain a chain reaction. Of course, Daglian did not want to achieve a critical chain reaction, but rather to find out exactly how the demon core reacts to what by adjusting the number of tungsten carbide under safe conditions. But what happened next is truly unbelievable. Harry Daglian accidentally dropped a tungsten carbide block onto the demon core. From what we've just discussed, you can imagine what that did. The core was suddenly brought much closer to critical mass, an uncontrolled chain reaction was triggered, and immense radiation was suddenly generated. Harry Daglian immediately removed the block to stop the reaction, but in that short time, he had already received a lethal dose of radiation, amounting to almost 5.17 Seward. Less than a month later, he died of radiation sickness. Now you would think that after this incident, the safety precautions at Los Alamos National Lab where the accident happened would have been increased. Not really, it has to be said. Because less than a year later, on May 21st, 1946, the next tragic accident occurred. The sequence of events of which still sounds incredible. The physicist Louis Sloten, incidentally a good friend of Daglian, was working on the Demon Core. The experiment he carried out was called Tickling the Dragon's Tail, and somehow exactly what you would expect to happen when you tickle a dragon's tail happened, namely a catastrophe. In this one, two hemispheres of beryllium were used, which served as neutron reflectors, i.e. had the same function as the tungsten carbide blocks in Daglian. These hemispheres were placed around the demon core to increase the number of neutrons remaining in the core and thus investigate the proximity to the critical point before an uncontrolled chain reaction. In the experiment, Louis Sloten wanted to bring the two beryllium hemispheres slowly towards each other and test how the demon core reacted. So far, so crazy, but now it gets really bizarre. Spaces were actually provided to prevent the two hemispheres from being fully assembled and thus completely enclosing the core, which would have triggered a nuclear chain reaction. At some point, however, Sloten simply used a screwdriver to keep them apart. Here you can see another reenactment of the experiment. You heard right. 
Louis Slotin was only separated from the nuclear fiasco in his own death by a screwdriver between the two hemispheres. It's kind of a macabre thought, but I always think to myself that it's no wonder that men live shorter lives on average than women. It happened as it had to, and the screwdriver slipped out of his grasp. The two hemispheres now completely surrounded the demon core and another critical nuclear chain reaction unfolded. Slotin's colleagues later described a blue glow around the core known as Cherenkov radiation, which is also visible in nuclear power plants. Slotin also felt a sour taste in his mouth and a burning sensation in his left hand. And although Slotin quickly separated the spheres again, thereby ending the supercritical reaction, it was unfortunately already too late. He died of radiation sickness just nine days later. Two incredibly tragic and bizarre accidents, and what I find really tragic about them is that both Daglian and Slotin, as experienced nuclear physicists, probably already knew at the moment of the accident what this brief moment of carelessness would mean namely their own death. Let's take a look at how it can be that such seemingly small mistakes can lead to such immense radiation exposure. First of all, the chain reactions that occurred during the fatal accidents with the demon core were not strong enough to trigger a full nuclear explosion. An operational nuclear bomb contains many more elements than just a plutonium core, for example reinforcing explosives, the demon core was therefore never close to a nuclear explosion, but reached a state that is described as critical in the truest sense of the word, it must be said. In such a state, an independent chain reaction occurs in which the number of neutrons in the material can stabilize or even slowly increase, but not as quickly as in an uncontrolled explosive chain reaction. Roughly speaking, the chain reaction starts when a neutron enters the plutonium nucleus and is absorbed by a plutonium-239 atom. This converts the plutonium-239 into plutonium-240, which is unstable. What happens to your life when you are mentally unstable? Exactly, it completely disintegrates into its individual parts. Somehow, this is a really depressing video. So the plutonium-240 then decays by splitting into two smaller atomic nuclei, so-called fission products. During this process, which you probably know better as nuclear fission, a large amount of energy is released in the form of heat and gamma radiation. Now you could say, well, a little energy is released, but then it's quickly over again. Unfortunately, this releases neutrons, which in turn hit other plutonium-239 atoms and also split them, releasing even more energy and neutrons. You can see what this amounts to, an exponentially stronger chain reaction. And this is exactly what happened in the few seconds in which the two researchers each had their neutron reflecting mishap. The story of the demon core thus clearly shows the immense power we are dealing with in nuclear fission. It is as frightening as it is fascinating. However, the topic is also relatively complex, so please write any questions you have about it in the comments. I'll try to answer as many as possible, I promise. Instead of increasing the number of neutrons in the plutonium nucleus, I would like to increase the number of subscribers to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet or know friends and family who are interested in space, I would be delighted if you would press the subscribe button. Thank you very much. A completely different form of energy, but one that can be even more destructive, lies dormant in the Yellowstone supervolcano. And NASA now wants to prevent this slumbering giant from erupting, I have explained everything about this crazy story and when we should expect an eruption of Yellowstone in the video shown here, be sure to click on it. It's very, very exciting. And if you want to support my work, you can also get the shirts from the videos and much more in the space shop. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.